So RGB color codes are basically three numbers and each number corresponds to how much red, green, or blue in a color. So every color is made up of various amounts of red, green, and blue. And then we use this basically in um, any design applications to determine different colors. You can make any color with any, with the differing values of red, green, and blue. So if you set every value to zero, you get black, right? There's no color. If you set all the values to the max value, 255 in RGB color codes, you get white. Um, if you set red to the max value, you obviously get a red. Um, if you set both red and blue to the max value, you get this lovely purple color. And if you set sort of a combination, you can get this color of emeralds, right? So if we look at this in a 3D space, you can see here that similar colors are being grouped together, obviously, because they have similar values, right? Um, so all the yellows are grouped together, all the greens are grouped together, the blues are grouped together, and more different colors are further apart. Okay, so each number is representing how much red, green, or blue is in the color. Funny enough, this is exactly what a vector embedding is when you're talking about vector embeddings in machine learning. It's a sequence of numbers that's representing the meaning. The main difference with RGB color codes is it's, it's three numbers, right? And we know exactly what each of those numbers corresponds to, the red, green, or the blue. Vector embeddings are much higher dimensions. They can be thousands of dimensions, and we don't exactly know what number corresponds to what feature of the meaning of the word. There's been some interesting research done about this, but we, we can't be quite sure. But for theoretical purposes, for understanding purposes, you can think of each of the dimensions as encoding sort of a feature of whatever it's encode or whatever it's embedding. So maybe in the vector for cat, one of the one of the numbers corresponds to if it's furry or not. Maybe one of them corresponds to if it's an animal or not, or if it has ears or not, different things like this. And the same thing happens with images or audio. Um, each of these numbers will encode a meaning of the vector or of, of the word or of the thing it's trying to embed. So that's sort of a high level overview of what vectors are. Um, this freaked me out a little bit. It took me a while to understand, so don't be um, concerned if you don't get it straight away at first. But for now, you, all you need to know, we can turn words and text and audio and video and images into the string of numbers that encodes its meaning, so that way we can use it in machine learning applications. When I first learned about this, I was like, okay, that's great, but like, <laughs> how does that process actually work? How is something learning how to encode a text or an image or an audio into the string of numbers? Like what? And as I mentioned before, we do this through embedding models. So how do they actually work? Um, I teased this a bit in the first part of the webinar. Um, word to vec was one of the original papers where we got to learn, or we where we got the idea that you could turn words into vectors um, through a method. Um, and what word to vec was, was a neural network that learned word associations from a really, really, really big corpus of text. So it was initially trained with over 100 billion words. And these words were fed into this neural network. And based on the words surrounding it, this neural network was able to learn what this word means. There's a few problems with word to vec um, We'll get into a little bit more how it works in a sec, but there's a few problems with word to vec It embeds on a word level. Um, there was a ways around this, um, but if you wanted to embed a full sentence with word to vec it wasn't the easiest thing. You'd have to do some vector combination things. Um, it also doesn't address words with multiple meanings. So for example, um, the word bank has multiple meanings. It can be the place where you put your money. It can be the place on the side of a river. It can be when you're driving really fast and turn your banking. It can be a verb. Um, so it doesn't address those. Bank would just have one vector using word to vec, which is interesting. OK, and they trained, or the way they got these embeddings from this model is they did a prediction model. And the particular prediction algorithm they used was called a skipgram. Basically, 
what you would do is you would input a word and the model would try to predict the words surrounding it. So the words that came before it and the words that came after it. And surprising enough, when you train a model to do this prediction thing, it gets really good at learning what a word means. And then you can take that vector output and use that as the vector representation. Let's go into a bit more about that prediction thing, because it's kind of interesting and I liked learning about it. OK, so um, as I mentioned, so let's make the data set for training our word to vec model. So we have the sentence, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to take an input word, and then our target words that we're going to use to basically score the model on how close it got to the target words are going to be the two words in front of it and the two words uh, behind it, if that makes sense. So we can get a data set over here of all of our, all of our data. So not is an input word, that's a target word, that's what we want the model to predict. Um, and for every input word, we get four target words. So then we're going to take our untrained neural network, our untrained model, and we're going to give it the task of predicting a neighboring word. So we're going to input not, and we want it to input our target, or we want it to output our target word of thou. Um, and the model is going to do this. It's going to say, OK, not I'm going to find that vector embedding. Then I'm going to take that vector embedding, go through all my math stuff in the background, and I'm going to output a prediction vector. And then we're going to correspond that to the vocabulary, so what word that prediction vector corresponds to. And our model chose to predict taco as its neighboring word. 